Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So, I decided after... I was actually watching a video by Quickie Baby, and I thought, well, that's not a bad idea to, uh, we can use for sort of Blitz content, whereby he was playing like the worst tanks in a tier. So, I mean, he, I think he started at tier 7, I'm not sure. And that got me thinking, well... Do we really have such content in Blitz? I don't think we do. So I'm going to do the worst tanks in the tier. And I'm going to start at tier 6. The reason being is that tiers 1 to 5 realistically are the training wheels. And, you know, the, the tanks don't really start to sort of shine until tier 6. Not really. So... I'm going to jump in at tier 6 and I'm going to do the worst tank according to Blitz Stars in each class. That's light tank, medium tank, heavy tank, and TD. And we're starting with the light tank. Now, according to Blitz Stars, the worst tier 6 light tank is the American light, the T37. You can see there it's been played in the last sort of 30 days. 262 times it has, it has a win rate of 48.84 percent and a survival rate of only 26 percent so it's not a particularly great tank it also has a hit rate of only 78 percent so why are people struggling in this tank well we're going to jump into a game and we're going to see how people are struggling in this tank now look i'm not going to use any premium tanks or any collectors i'm only looking at tech tree tanks so we're jumping into the T-37 first. There it is there in all its glory. And it's a strange little beastie of a tank. Um, it's a light tank by design, but you wouldn't think that. It seems a bit sluggish. Looking at uh, its bits and bobs, while it comes with a plethora of guns, and I'm using it with the single shot rather than the auto loader. You can see here its hit points to light tank. There's only 900 of them. And the armor on the front, on the sides, be it the turret or the hull, wow, well, it's pretty paper thin. I mean, this thing is just a paper bag with a gun. And not a great gun at that. View range isn't too bad. Concealment, not too bad. DPM, 1800. That's not too bad for a tier 6. Reload time, those 5 seconds. I mean, that's pretty lengthy, really, for a, a tier 6 uh, light tank. Penetration, wow, for the uh, for your standard ammunition, it's 142. For your APCR, it's 189. And for HE, it's 42. Not too shabby for tier 6. Damage, however, wow. I mean, 160 I end alpha on your normal ammunition uh, after a, almost a 6-second reload is, is pretty, pretty poor. Um, and the aim time, 3.1 seconds for a tier 6 light tank is also pretty poor. Dispersion, not the best either, 0 0.34. And you can see there, it's got pretty decent gun depression, 9 degrees. Maneuverability, well, the top speed going forward is 66, with the average speed of 39. Power to weight ratio is pretty nice, and all that sort of jazz. But what's this tank actually like to play? Well, let's jump into a game and find out. Here we are on Yukon in our little T-37. And you can see here that the electric biscuit is outperforming me speed-wise. Don't forget, this has got a top speed of 66 going forward, but it takes quite a lot of time to build up to that. You will get there, um, but then you come across a hill and you start losing that speed again. This tank is a really tricky tank to play. It doesn't have the best gun handling, and it really got no armor. I mean, you've really got to wait for that reticle to come down. And this is probably where most players are struggling in it. Because, you know, light tanks are normally pretty accurate. And this one just isn't. The gun handling really lets this tank down along with its armor. I mean, you will get a couple of bounces every now and then if you're lucky. Nine degrees of gun depression. Well, it's manageable, but again, it's not the best. I mean, you can see here the turret is pretty, pretty big. And because its armor is so thin, virtually everybody's going to be able to smack you. So this is a tank that you really got to be careful with, and that's probably why a lot of people are struggling with it. It just doesn't have that reload time and that I end alpha to, to make it truly effective. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, if you play it conservatively, it's not a bad tank. And we're doing okay here. 
I mean, I only went up here to get some spots, but uh, in the end, the enemy team decided to come up and sort of out-trade me a little bit. And that, you see, I'm struggling here with that gun depression. I don't want to stick my head too far up because there are nasty things over there. This is where the gun handling really suffers. I mean, that dispersion and that reticle just takes too, too long. So you've really got to take your time with this. That's not to say you can't have decent games in it, because you can. You've just got to be very careful. And, you know, I'm just churning out that average I end alpha here. And want, yeah, I tried to HE him, and just not good. And, you know, I'm just churning out the average I end alpha of 160, and, you know, every six seconds. And, and that's basically what you do. You see, I'm, I'm trying to use the gun depression thinking that I've got that Jackson on the reload, but I'm just not able to clear him, and they just able to pen you everywhere. And that's the thing. I mean, it's not a terrible tank. It's just not an easy tank in Tier 6. And the thing is, there are much better tanks in Tier 6. I mean, there's an agent there. He's a much better pack tank. There's a VK-28. It's a much better tank. And then when you start looking at what tanks there are out there i mean what you got you got the mt25 better tank the m24 chaffee a better tank the amx 12t a better tank and the vk28 all in the tech tree and all better tanks now the thing there is i mean we did next to nothing and we got a third class which is better than 50 percent of the player base so you know it just goes to show that this tank really is underperforming in a lot of respects and I feel the danger there is because of its terrible gun handling, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, if I just compare it to the Chaffee, which is the other tier 6 American light tank, I mean, that's got a win rate of close to 51%. And, you know, its, it's accuracy is much better. Survivability is not that much better, funnily enough. But, the D, the, but its damage per battle is better. Its kills per battle is better. So, you know, the Chaffee's just got a better gun. And therefore, people are jumping into the Chaffee more than they want to jump into the T-37, which is pretty understandable. Anyway, we're now going to move to the medium tanks and see which is the worst there. So, we've now got the worst performing mediums up on the screen. As you can see, top of the tree is actually the VK-302M. But that's a collector, and I'm avoiding collectors and premium tanks. So we're looking at the next one down, which is the Type 4 Cheeto, the Japanese medium tank, a notorious difficult tank to play. As you can see, 219 battles, a 47% win rate. Again, the accuracy, pretty bad, 78.59%. The average damage is, well, equal to the VK, and, and slightly better than the VK301D. And its survivability is pretty shocking at 26%, which if you look at all the other tanks on that chart, is actually pretty terrible. So what is it about the Cheeto? So this is the Cheeto, and as you can see, it's just a big boxy tank. And again, it's a notoriously difficult tank to play, considering it's a medium. Again, I'm, I've got it with all the top stuff here. And looking at the survivability, well, the hit point is only 1,028. It's a medium tank. I mean, that's pretty bad. Main armor. Well, look at the armor. I mean, frontal armor on the turret is 75 millimeters. Same as the hull. Sides, 50 millimeters. 35 on the hull. 50 millimeters on the rear, 35 on the hull. View range. Well, it's a medium. It, that's not great, but it's okay. Camo and concealment, not too bad, pretty average. DPM is 1800. Reload time is again 5.25, is over 5 seconds, 5.25 seconds, which for a medium is pretty lengthy. Penetration, where well, you're knocking out 163 mil on your AP and on your premium AP, 195 HE42. Average damage, 160. That's the same as the T37. The T37 is a light, so, you know, this is a medium. It's meant to be knocking out more IN alpha, but it's just not. Um, got better, got, it's got a better aim time, 2.8 seconds this time, rather than the 3.5 seconds of the T37. And the gun, well, the, disper the, the, the depression is 10 degrees, and the dispersion is actually better than the T37. Speed, it's not too slow. 50 kilometers an hour going forwards is your top speed. And, uh, wow, 33 is your average. So let's jump into a game and let's see where people are struggling and why.
Well, we got quite lucky. We're on Fort Despair, which is quite a nice map for this tank. I must admit, I'm not a fan of the G2. And for those of you thinking, I'm actually doing this on my press account because I've, I haven't played tier six for like an eternity. The G2, where does it struggle? Well, it struggles because people think it looks like a heavy tank when actually it's a medium tank. But does it really have the same parameters of a medium tank? When you look at the tier of some of the medium tanks you've got there, I'm thinking, you know, you've got the Cromwell in this tier. The Cromwell is a fantastic tank. And when you've got the likes of the Cromwell and you've got the likes of the T3485, then this one's always going to struggle, to be honest with you. It's, it's never going to be setting the world on fire. It's a tricky tank. It's got pretty, pretty bad armor. It's not the best. It's got an okay gun. I mean, it's not brilliant, but it's okay. You'll dish out some decent damage. It can when it wants to be pretty accurate. And it's got a reasonable turn of speed. But it's just so tall. It's just so big and so boxy that you know, it's just a terrible tank in that regard. And I think that's where people struggle. They look at this and they fail to realize it's actually a medium. But, but don't be deceived, it's not a real medium. It, it plays more like a heavium, you know. It's more like that type of tank. It's a heavium without the armor. It's a medium without the maneuverability. It's, it's a strange hybrid. And that's probably where people are struggling in this tank because they have that mindset. Not only that, why would you play this tank when you've got tanks such as the T-3485 and the Cromwell? I mean, you just wouldn't. And that's the thing. And that's a crying shame. I mean, that was a terrible shot. I don't know what happened there. I, I, I thought I was aiming on him, and clearly I wasn't. We've done nothing in this game. We've killed nothing. We've knocked out 844 damage. Okay, we bounced 160. And it just goes to show how terrible the tank is when I'm going to get a third class, which means I'm playing that tank 50% better than the majority of the players. Who have played it recently i mean look at that that's a third class that's that's just mad that's just mad for 844 damage it's like what and you know just to prove it you know prove your mastery in controlling a tank earn more xp in battle than the average highest xp of 50 percent of the players who have fought in this tank in the previous seven days i mean wow if i'm f playing this tank better than 50 percent of the player base then people are struggling in this tank and it, it's understandable it's not the best. I mean, although we got third top damage there, which was a shock. So we've looked at the light tank, the T-37, sat on the American tech tree. We've looked at the medium tank, the Cheeto, sat on the Japanese tech tree. Time to look at the heavy tank. And boy, it's a shocker. Moving into the worst performing heavy tank in tier six, it is, according to Blitzstars, the Churchill 7. And that doesn't surprise me, if I'm being honest. So 218 battles have been knocked out, and it has a 48.47% win rate. Survivability is not too bad, 34%. The hit rate is pretty shocking, 78%. Its DPM, damage per battle, is pretty shocking as well. You can see there, it's the worst, on the, it's the worst of the worst. I mean, 715. Its kill death rate is only, it's not even one, it's 0 0.94. And its kills per battle is, you know, pretty bad as well. So what is it about the Churchill? This is the Churchill 7. It's a British heavy tank sitting in the tier. And upon first look, you think, wow, it, it's pretty stonking. Looks nice, looks beautiful, looks lovely. Then you start looking at it, and again, this is all the top stuff. Well, here we go. Hit points, 1,200. Not bad for a tier 6. Main armor, turret, 152. And the hull, frontally, 152. That's not bad. Sides, 95. Both. Rear, 95 of the turret, 51 on the rear of the hull. View range, 271. That ain't bad either. Concealment, that's a heavy. It's, it's never going to be very well concealed. DPM, 2,000. If it's doing 2,000, why, why, why is this one of the worst performing uh, you know, damage per barrel tanks in the tier at, at its class? Reload time, 4.8 seconds. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. That's really good for a heavy, considering like we looked at the G2 and we looked at the T37, and they're both five seconds. Average penetration, 155. Oh, that's a bit low. 
armor piercing uh, CPR APCR is 218. That's well, not too bad. HE 22. That's really low. Average damage 160. That's the same as the T37. <laughs> I mean, aim time 3.4 seconds. That's probably the same as the G2. Dispersion 0.344. Same as the medium G2. Gun depression. Four degrees! I mean, what? It's four degrees! It's terrible! Then we come on to the speed. Top speed! 20 kilometers an hour. What? I mean, this thing is just like... Buh, 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 buh. And the average speed is 20. So, you start to see where this tank is starting to struggle. Okay, it's got armor, but it's got... And it's got a fast loading gun. And it's got good DPM, but you've got to land those shots, you've got to pen those shots, and you're only knocking at 160 in alpha. But not only that, you're slower than a slow thing that's really slow, so getting to the battle ain't exactly easy. But let's jump into a game and see what it's all about. Thankfully, we got this map. Oh, thank God for that. Had we not got this map, it probably would have been a little more disastrous but you know coming out onto this map is not too bad let's be honest we're on a supremacy game so i'm going to take it up to the sea cap and try remember it's got no gun depression this thing so there's no point me going up to where that arl 44 is because the gun is just going to be pointing up in the air so i've got to use this littlest tiniest ridge and try and use that four degrees and i do but then that kiros just smacks me and then look i can't pen him at all <sighs> And this is where the tank struggles. The tank struggles because it's got great frontal armor, don't get me wrong, but it's not that great. Other tanks can smack you. It's got a great reload, but it doesn't have the best penetration. Okay, and it doesn't dish out the most damage. However, however, to be fair, I mean, the DPM of 2000 for a heavy tank in this tier isn't too bad. But what lets it down more than anything else is that it's just colossally slow. You just can't go anywhere fast and that leaves you vulnerable to be pushed i mean this kiros is pushing me and he's having a good time about it and he's knocking me for 200 and something and i'm knocking him for 160 and that's the thing i mean look at that you just can't pen the bdr and this is this is where again people start to struggle in these type of tanks because they look at these tanks and they think oh it's a big massive heavy tank when actually it's it's it looks on paper like a big massive heavy tank but it, realistically, it just isn't. It's, it's a, again, another box. There's a lot of traps there. And, you know, the gun just isn't that great. Um, it, you know, struggling to pen this BDR. Okay, we've done 18 and we've done 1,095 damage, but that's nothing. We're going to cap a base and we've taken like, one kill. But we've lost a shedload of hit points, over half, to be fair. And look, I can't get the gun up to smack the Wolverine. And as much as I would love to go and smack the Wolverine, look at the speed. I mean, 14, 13, 12, 10 kilometers going up this slight incline. And that's the problem with this tank. Now, also, the gun handling isn't the best either. I mean, I want to get this shot on. Okay. Just like that. A horrible gun handling. Um... And now, you know, I've got uh, we've got that P-43 Biz, and he's over the other side of the map. The chances of me getting anywhere near him anytime soon is, like, ridiculously not going to happen. And that's the, that's the issue with this tank. You know, it, it, it wants to be frontline to use its colossally poor speed and really good frontal armor, but it really can't. And this is where people are coming on stuck. It needs to really have targets pop up in front of it side that's on their side so you can smack it we we have a relatively decent game there we do just shy of 2000 damage and again it just goes to show how bad the tank actually is because we get another third class and we're getting another third class because people are struggling in this tank and it's no surprise it's too slow its penetration is not good enough and it's just not a good tank again we, we we we're third best but that's not the point is it so yeah not not the best of heavies especially when you start considering the other heavies in tier six such as the arl 44 the kv1s the kv2 i mean even the kv2 which is notoriously poor with that derp gun is doing better than this poor little thing and that's the problem you know with tanks like this there are just better tanks in the tier 
and you, you know you've got to sort of rush through these tanks just to unlock the next tank in the class anyway we've done the light we've done the medium and we've done the heavy and you know if you've been playing this game long enough there should be no surprises in what is the worst TD in tier 6. We're finally looking at the TDs and as I said there should be no surprises it is the ARL V39. This is a terrible tank. I mean it has a 47% win rate. I mean that's just shockingly bad. I mean even the Churchill game carrier has a better win rate. <laughs> I mean this tank is just terrible. It has a DPM of 744. Never forget, this is a TD. I mean, the 88 is better, and the 88 is notoriously not great. The, K, the, 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 the kills per battle is 0 0.641. Again, pretty, pretty terrible. Survivability, 26%, and the hit rate, 74%. This, by any stretch of the imagination, is not a good tank. And why? Well, look at it. I mean, it's terrible. Uh, I mean, the turret on the top just is, is, is a bullet magnet, let's be fair. It's, it's squat, it's small, it's, it, okay, it's got a huge gun, but <laughs> it's sticking out the end. But it, it's, it's just a horrible tank. It really, really is. Now, let's have a look at its parameters. Survivability, hit points, 954. That's not great. Armor. Well, it's got no turret. Frontally, 78. Mm. Sides, 39. Mm. Rear, 59. Mm. I mean, this is just a paper bag. It really is. View range, 266. Mm. <laughs> Concealment, not bad for a TD when you put the camo net on. DPM, 2140. That's good. I mean, that's not bad. Reload time, nine seconds almost. I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> it's just terrible. Average penetration, 173. That's not great either. It's not bad, but it's not great. Don't forget this is a TD. You know, you got to think about that. APCR, 234. That's much better. And your HE, 59. Damage. Damage is good. 310 on your AP, 260 on your APCR, and 400 on your HE. That's very nice. Aim time, four seconds. <laughs> not believably bad. Dispersion. Dispersion is good. 0 0.293. Gun depression. Well, he's got better gun depression than the Churchill, considering that this tank is just a pancake with a gun stubbed on it. It's got six degrees. The Churchill had four. This has got six, so that's not too bad. Um, the gun turn, left and right, seven. It's not just not good. <laughs> Maneuverability. It's actually not. It's faster than the Churchill. 45 top speed, 33 average. So, you know, it's not shabby in going forwards. But what is this tank like to actually play? And why is everybody struggling in it? Rolling out on Desert Sands. A nice map, to be fair. I'm in Supremacy, which I, um, if my, my account on the uh, on my press account is the same form. So I'm going to try and shoot something down there. Maybe there's something down there. I don't know. Now, as I said, this thing is not too shabby in its maneuverability, to be fair. It's pretty, pretty nippy. You can get some pretty decent speed out of it. But it's a TD, and you can't really do too much, is it? Now, it, there's no point me camping at the back. The, the team is over here. And the problem that this tank has is that it's very, very squat. And it has no gun depression. So you've got to get it on a flat piece of ground, really, uh, in order to get the shots out. Because if you're not on a flat piece of ground, then you're not big enough, tall enough, high enough to do anything. And that's where everybody struggles in this tank. And, you know, I mean, this is just a terrible shot because you're trying to get the gun round and... Ah, where did it go? I don't know. But, you know, when it's facing off things like the little lipard there, it's going to do boom. 200. That's nice. That's lovely. But now you've got to drop your speed and, you know, you've got to try and chase it round the tank. And thankfully, I've got some teammates who are going to help me chase him around. The aim time is a bit long, but you can manage it. And that's why this is this is the worst thing about this tank. It's just too squat. It's too situational. Now again, we have an obliging team, which is very nice. If I didn't have an obliging team, this game could have gone south very quickly. If you have it on a flat little bit of ground, like I'm going to do in a moment, 
the chances are you can use the gun depression a little bit if you wait it out there you go you can do shots like that but you've got to wait it out and we're going to do it again Boom. and you've got to just wait for the aim time to come down and you've got to be in positions like this which is not the best to be fair so we've knocked out 830 we've taken three kills there's a VK-36. Okay, we're going to get the side of his turret, but I ain't going to get anything else. I've got to load the APCR because I just can't pen him. Down he goes. So we've done 1,224. We've knocked out 150. We've taken three kills. This is not a bad game in the ARL. Because um, it's not a good tank. It really isn't. And I can see why people struggle with it. Because they just don't know where to put the tank. And they don't know what to do with it. Now, I found that the most effective way to use this tank realistically is to stay just behind your heavies or to find a nice spot where you can really camp um, aside from that it's not good I mean I'm lucky because as I said we had an obliging team on the other side who just like being smacked and we end up with four kills and 1400 damage which is not bad for that tank actually we do 1600 damage by the looks on it that's not bad for that tank and you know we get rewarded with a second class now that means that we have played this tank pretty well compared to the player base. And I just want to go back to that because I want to sh talk about, you know. So we have played that battle better than 80% of the player base. I mean, that is how many people are struggling in this tank. It's just not a good tank. We come top damage, which isn't bad. I mean, it's quite nice. It's quite lovely. But when you start looking at the other tanks out there, I mean, you've got the SU-100, you've got the M18 Hellcat, uh, you've got Yag Panzer and, and stuff like that, you can see why this tank is just a pain in the royal posterior. It is not a beautiful tank. Never has been, never will be. And with it being so flat and so squat, with the gun sticking out with, okay, a reasonably decent in depression, then you know you can understand why players are struggling in it and don't get me wrong i mean that turret that little turret can be smacked around and it's, it's got no armor on it and everybody aims for it and so you can't really put it in a lovely little squat position because the turret still sticks above the top anyway that's been my look at the worst performing tier six tanks i've been food it that has been the t37 the G2, the Churchill 7, and the bless it, the ARL V39. I thought I'd try something different because there are players out there who are doing, you know, tier 6s and not everybody plays in tier 10. By all means, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this video. Is it, you know, was it interesting or anything like that? Until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about having fun and being happy.